Hello everyone, I'm Randy Pettit. Some call me racing's greatest showman for my colorful outfits and my flashy announcing style as the voice of iconic Bowman Gray Racing, the Madhouse, in my hometown of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I've actually announced races all across the country at over 111 venues, including my Friday night track, Ace Speedway, which is just north of Burlington, North Carolina. One of the most unusual experiences I had was actually announcing uh, a boat drag that was done by a local organization, the JCs, just outside of my hometown here in North Carolina. And it was a very successful event and it was done on a lake and they had the top drag boat racing series in America at the time uh, at this event. Well, I was a newspaper guy at the time and I was helping some with the announcing at the event because they knew I did local racing over at Bowman Gray. And what was really unusual about this situation was I went as a joke and I talked to one of the top stars in drag boat racing whose name I'm not going to mention because I don't want to get their crew in trouble. But I made a bet with this guy. If I can get you on the front page of all three newspapers here in the triad where they can see your sponsor logo, will you let me drive your boat? And he got quiet for a minute and said, you got a deal. Shook my hand. And I was like, okay, well, I know I got one of these because I was there actually doing the story for uh, one of the newspapers. There was three of them near my hometown, pretty good sized papers. And I made a phone call, done deal on one. Well, the second one I had a little bit of an edge going in because the sports editor of that newspaper had been my editor where I'd worked prior to that as a sports editor of a weekly newspaper. So I called in a favor to my buddy, took a little bit of talking, but I got that one done. And the last one took a little bit of doing because I didn't have any connection to the top. But I just used up every bit of social capital that I had and I got the job done. So on Sunday morning, this top star of drag boat racing was on the front page of all three area newspapers. And of course, I bought a copy of each one before I got to the track or to the, to the event, I should say. And I took them to the crew chief and to the driver and I said, guys, it's time to pay up. Well, of course, they couldn't let me drive a top fuel hydro drag boat with a Keith Black drag racing motor on the back of it in front of all these people. So what we worked out, they were going to stick around and test on Monday at the event. So we shook hands. I did my announcing, wrote my story, and I came back to the same venue on Monday morning. Everybody was gone but two teams. And there it said. They had another boat that they were testing uh, to maybe debut in a future event and they made a couple of runs in it and finally they got me strapped in that boat and I'll never forget it was like getting in a coffin. I'm a big guy, I was you know 6'2", about 220 at the time and, and the driver was a little smaller than me and I barely fit in that thing and I remember getting in there and they closed the top of it and sealed it off and it was like a capsule. It was like a coffin with a capsule in it. And it was designed where if you cracked up during a crash and the boat cracked into several pieces, that capsule would remain intact and it would float to the surface. So once I got in there, I had no idea how dangerous that was going to be until I got in there. And they fired that motor up. And I'm going to tell you what, I never in all my years of covering motorsports felt anything like that big old fire-breathing, nitro-burning motor coming to life. And they let me drop the hammer. I did about half, two-thirds of a pass, and they shut it off. But I'm going to tell you what, that was the most incredible rush and thrill of a lifetime for a guy that had spent many, many years in the sport and many years after that, and nothing has ever come close.